I would like to go over some concepts concerning arrays, and I am using the uh, files in the sample code. Here we see a typical array being defined. The name of the array is my array, and the length is 4. We start with array index 0, we store a value, array index 1, we store a value, 2, 3, etc. Now, if we wanted to loop through this array, we could use a for loop. For loops are very commonly used for looping through arrays because arrays by nature start at zero. And the length of the array is the number which is always one more than the last array index. So for loops work well with arrays. If I were to use the alert, which is a very good tool to test, and I'm concatenating a string, the value of, concatenated with i, which initially will be 1, concatenated with the value of array index i, concatenated with the expression. Now the expression my array index i, the i is being derived from our for loop. It's starting with one, excuse me, it's starting with zero. And so my the first pet time around, my array i is going to be my array zero, which will be apples. So if we were to look at this file here. There's the first one, apples, the second one, oranges, the third one, pears, and the next one, peaches. Now, we're using an, an alert, so it's going to give us each one separately. Supposing we wanted to write the values of this array to a page. All right, using the first child.node value, is a little cumbersome at this point because we haven't covered all of the properties of the document object model yet. So here we have the same array and what we would need to do, we would need to actually construct an ID placeholder for each of our array element indexes, which works but it's a little cumbersome, but if you were to add more elements, then you have to go back and rewrite your page. However, to demonstrate the principle, array 0, which is our placeholder, id equals array 0, dot first child dot node value equals my array 0. So we can, now, because my array 0 returns text, we can store that in the first child of the node value because the first child is a text node. So if we were to look at this in the browser, here we can see indeed that we can store these values. All right, supposing we wanted to do this a little bit more efficiently with a loop. All right, here I have the same array. Now, the only difference is that I have one placeholder. And what I want to do is I want to loop through all of the array elements and write them all one time. That way I don't have to have an individual placeholder for each element index. Now, I'm using the onload function because we're writing to the page. Here's my for loop. Now, what I'm doing, I'm using inner HTML to, to demonstrate a, a point. The inner HTML property of this object is text and HTML, meaning we can actually add a BR in order to separate our array elements on single lines, which is what we want. We don't want everything together. Now remember in the previous example, we had individual placeholders. Now I'm using plus equal. Plus equal is used to build a string. So the first time round, we are saying apples 
a break. Second time round, we are saying apples break plus oranges break, etc. So if I were to load this file, there we are. We have our four indexes on a separate lines. Now, if you were to use your Firebug add-on, which is a very valuable tool, and I recommend using it, you can actually see the output. There we have generated the breaks after our array elements because we wrote this in our JavaScript code. Now, supposing I tried to put firstchild.node value here. And I'm going to save this. And I'm going to load it one more time. Notice I can't do it. Because this, these are not text nodes. These are actually element nodes. And if you wanted them to act like a BR element, you would have to use a little bit more of the document object model, which will be covered in session 7. So at this point, based on what we have learned, the best way of looping through an array for purposes of displaying it onto the web page is using inner HTML. Actually, a lot of developers like inner HTML because it is very easy to use. Let me just show you one more example. In our body section, we have the same placeholder id equals array. But what we're going to do, and let me show you the output first, we're going to very nicely lay out our code so that not only do we have a heading, but we also have a very nice unordered list. And you can do this very easily with uh, inner HTML and a loop, because with inner HTML, we can add HTML to our JavaScript. All right, so let's take a look at what we're doing here. Everything is in the onload function that's being written to the page. I have two variables, str for a string and str2. OK, my first string is my h2, so I'm dynamically generating this. My second string, I'm starting out as an empty string. That is being used inside my for loop. So I am building this string. What I am doing is I'm actually putting my opening li, concatenating it with my expression that will generate the value for my array element, concatenated with my closing li. So the for loop is actually creating the, the li elements. Now, this is this, the statement that writes to the page. There's get element by id array. It's writing to my placeholder here. And here's my inner HTML equals. Up here in my variable, this is where I'm building the string. So I have a plus equal here. This is just a single equal. Equals what? My str, which is my h2 element up here, concatenated with my opening ul, concatenated with this string expression that we built, which is a collection of my li elements concatenated with my ending ul. So look how nice that was. We can actually loop through an array and display it as an unordered list. So let's go back and take a look at that. And we'll use our Firebug add-on. And we can indeed see that we did actually correctly generate our HTML. And one thing that you'll always want to do when you're dynamically generating HTML with JavaScript is to actually go back and look at the rendered code to make sure that it is syntactically correct.